welcome our panelists uh, first of all we have uh, someone who has uh, been working for a long long time and uh, he is the avp and program head founding member at sbi foundation the non profit arm of india's largest public sector bank and uh, state bank of india and also the first non profit foundation in the public space uh, sector uh, they have impacted positively the lives of more than 25 million indians that's 2.5 crore people and with a budget of 50 million dollars uh, uh, please uh, bigger, give a big round of applause for mr aman bhaiya uh, aman ji bahut bahut swagat hai aapka and uh, request you to kindly take your seat on the dais uh, aman has expertise in designing identifying funding monitoring and evaluating and scaling transformative social impact initiatives that address pressing issues uh, such as livelihood and many others uh, thank you aman for being a part of the discussion today i uh, would like to now welcome uh, someone the founder and ceo at lead angels uh, please welcome with a, with a big round of applause mr sushanto mitra Sushanto thank you for joining us uh, Lead Angels work with startups at every stage of growth uh, providing strategic consulting and execution of incorporation related activities and they have gained traction uh, wherever there is there and Lead Angels are there the first CEO of Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship IIT Bombay uh, that was uh, Sushanto there and uh, he has a diverse experience and has worked across various local and global firms thank you sir for joining us uh, and i'd like to now also welcome the chief delivery officer at t hub uh, should i call him the wing commander <laughs> and uh, former joint project director at drdo uh, gm founding member at mygate consultant with the telangana state innovation cell with a big round of applause please welcome mr anish anthony thank you sir for uh, gracing the occasion and uh, finally someone with over 15 plus years of experience across venture capital angel investing consulting and entrepreneurship please welcome head of investments at get vantage uh, mr sajid sundrani right now the discussion is regarding uh, co investing strategies with incubators and we have kind of curated a panel which consists of uh, incubators uh, angel investors and uh, obviously from a csr point of view uh, sbi foundation who has uh, actively kind of supported uh, such initiatives as well uh, collaboration is the name of the game and uh, from that perspective incubation centers while they have uh, you know a great support from government in terms of grants that they can invest in startups uh, it would always benefit the ecosystem if they are co investing with certain uh, key stakeholders so that the success of the startups is basically ensured so you know diving straight into it i would ask my first question to sushanto uh, because considering your experience running uh, iit sign uh, you know heading them for uh, so many years at at the very beginning and then setting up one of the largest uh, angel networks in india you have been on the both sides of the table so uh, my question to you is you know how do you propose incubators and angel investors or networks for that matter can work together for funding startups thanks um, for in having me here and it's lovely to see so many people in such a lovely auditorium so thank you very much so yes i have been on both sides of the table so i'll begin with you know we had a professor in iit bombay and he's still there is the used to be the head of the uh, comp science department and he said that in india lakshmi and saraswati with no you know religious uh, overtones to this don't ever talk to each other and that is the biggest problem with the indian uh, startup ecosystem so while i was in uh, iit bombay uh, working with the incubator our biggest problem was to get people to come to you know if you know if you live in bombay you know how difficult it is to get to powai so most of the funds and angel networks had their offices in south bombay and and worli just to get them to iit was a very big problem then the issue was and and that is probably true for many incubators of getting angel investors to visit uh, uh, the incubators of that's problem number 1 the problem number 2 is that we generally as incubator managers think it from our perspective that all our babies are very you know exciting for the investors we don't understand what funds or angel networks are looking for for they are looking for investment opportunities they are not so concerned about what is the innovation or what is the ip that you hold we coming from an iit sort of 
frame of mind were more concerned about the technology and so on. Investors are not really concerned about that. So that used to be the next problem. And the last problem used to be that when we used to invest, we were investing from monies which we were granted by the Ministry for Information Technology, DST and so on, which had a lot of strings attached to it. And when investors were investing, they wanted certain preferential terms to invest. And we found it very difficult to match these two. Of course, you know, uh, we were lucky that many of our alumni were uh, angel investors or running VC funds. So we were slowly able to uh, mm, uh, do that. And of course, my colleague uh, and now the CEO of Sign, Poini Bhatt, has done a wonderful job and, and put Sign as one of the most successful incubators. Right. In so, thank you for that. Uh, so, I mean, looking at it from an angel investor point of view, obviously engaging with them is very important from a, uh, from incubation uh, team point of view as well, right? Uh, one thing, I mean, and uh, agenda for this uh, complete event, right? The CSR angle to it. Uh, so, Aman, can you address uh, that side of the equation for incubation centers? That uh, how can they engage with organizations such as yours, SBI Foundation, who has done a fantastic job in you know impacting uh, social innovation uh, to kind of get in touch with you how can they work with you and what are the kind of projects that you're doing with incubators per se uh, from a uh, funding point of view and fantastic panel we have here so i would like to give a small background on what we are doing in the incubation space so over the last three years right before covid uh, we set up a revolving fund with one of the incubators so the idea is we pick up problem statement and then analyze the portfolio of these incubators and select like handpick few uh, startup companies who are solving those problems like for us we have uh, mentioned NGOs are doing a fantastic work with us because we have more than 200 NGO partners so second problem is something around creating additional income for Kirana stores or small store owners and also taking care of climate change so something like electric vehicle recharging stations we are setting up in Bangalore then some problems like we have been working around the field of organ donation over the last five years. So whereas we have brought about policy changes in five states, like Manipur being the latest state, which did a kidney transplant on its own. So the NGO is doing all the policy level work. But now the main roadblock is when we harvest organs, like suppose some accident happened in Viliparle and you have to transport them to Nagpur. So to go to the airport, it takes one hour. And then we have a life of three to four hours of the organs. So now we are, supporting research on how to use drones to transport organs within the city. So such kind of problem statements we identify and then we look out for partners like incubators as well as startups who can solve this problem. So this is on our side like how we select and on the incubator side we fund another three incubators. One is Will Grow, AIC, RMP, CCAM and FISC. So these are the four incubator partners that we have and we have incubated more than 23 to 25 startups. Uh, so far and what we look for is so the good news is yesterday we launched a request for proposals and one of the theme is innovation so under that incubators can apply so that is on our LinkedIn even on my LinkedIn I have reshared that post so we are, we are calling for proposals so in Maharashtra we launched uh, last year something called as Maharashtra Parivartan challenge so that is only for uh, Maharashtra based startups so something around making online transactions small amount save something around promoting women entrepreneurship and we have kept like a reserve in all our challenges 50% for women led startups so these are some of the themes so basically the themes have to match with our existing programs so the RFP that we launched yesterday that has themes of uh, fintech uh, climate change then uh, women based startup like women led startup so these are some of the themes that we are looking for and uh, I think uh Many of the incubators that we have partnered with as well uh, work on similar lines, I believe. Uh, now coming to the largest uh, incubator in India, T-Hub, right? So uh, I, Anish, you mentioned that 1,000 startups work out of T-Hub, right? So uh, that, that is, I think, the melting pot of uh, all that is happening in the startup ecosystem. So how has the journey been like for you uh, from a incubation uh, side? How has funding startups been like, what is your philosophy in kind of supporting them? Yeah, I think uh, first as a starting point, right, I think without uh, 
governmental support that is a, which is sort of a seed for any incubator if you look at an incubator like a startup without governmental support like meti like dst i think kickstarting that entire incubator program will not be possible right but having said that coming more to the topic of the subject right? uh, at a certain point of time the incubator needs to figure out what its strengths are right you need to start working towards a strength uh, do you want to go uh, wide which is you want, do you want to go to scale right or do you want to go deep which is you want to super specialize into one particular aspect the incubator has to figure out his own business model so to speak because it's in his own right it's a startup you, you need to look at it as a business unit so that at a certain point of time you can become sustainable uh, you cannot be dependent on uh, third parties government forever sort of a thing right so when you get to that i think you have that 3 4 5 year timeline uh, to become self sustaining now when you start looking at yourself as a business unit you start see what is the resources that i have right and i think the resources that is that you have in a certain sense is the expertise that you have which means if you are a technical institute or a technical incubator you have a high level of expertise in terms of what is the technical know how that is available with you right uh, second resource that you have is the startups who are working really deep in those technical institutes right so that is a kind of resource that you have on the other hand you have so to speak if i may nomenclature them you have a client base right for who will engage with your resources right so now how do i deploy these resources engage these resources with the client base to make the facilitator or the incubator self sustaining right so in that journey to get from place a to place b you have to devise your own model they cannot be a, a sort of set model or a rule book for everybody to follow so everyone can't follow t hub t hub has its own uh, way of functioning right t hub has its own way we want to go wide we want to go deep and we want to go fast i think that is where we want to go right we are saying that for example our model would be okay how can i engage corporates right and corporate comes in all hues and tones right which means if i want to engage with banks right what all can i do with the startups so when i put a filter of banks right and when i put a filter of you know payment gateways now that list becomes really very small so to be engaging with them i need to work with thousand startups so when i say end up putting those filters i have a sizable amount to engage with them so thousand startups that is a business model that we have evolved saying that i want to go wide have a lot of startups engage with a lot of startups so that i become relevant to any corporate who wants to engage with me got it got it right and then i want to go deep also because i want to make those startups successful whatever it takes as of now it's an art right what makes a successful startup it's it's a lot of art that's why i mean picking a good successful startup putting money on him as an investment also it's a is not a pure science as such right so you need to figure out and when you're picking up equity i think one of the topic was how do you pick up equity right so you need to figure out the way to do you want to go the equity way do you want to go the y combinator way for example you call for application 8000 applications comes you get it to 250 and then you start put money and time and effort in them or you just put a lot of time and effort run really strong structured programs for them how what is the model that you want to grow successful startups right and then pick i mean coming to investments right uh, sajid of course uh, you're a highly relevant and uh, upcoming uh, field of investments i believe from a get advantage uh, side so get advantage raised uh, 5 million dollars uh, previously as a seed and then recently 36 million dollars to uh improve tech and expand into new territories so what is your take on collaborating with uh, incubation centers and when can these incubators come to you for revenue based financing what is the stage at which that happens in addition to get advantage and revenue based financing i think the entire indian ecosystem is working along with incubation centers irrespective of the stage of investments so if you see all the angel networks or family offices that potent seed investments would engage with the incubation centers when they are investing if you take a look at uh, the venture capital funds or private equity funds they would fund the companies that were an incubator at some point of their journey in terms of timelines uh, now get advantage uh, is a tech driven platform and uh, what we do is we invest non dilutive capitals be it via revenue based financing or via venture debt without equity triggers or via different products or structures we are also getting into uh, dilutive financing as well now uh, 
while I was there in Mumbai Angels and heading Mumbai Angels, or I am in Get Vantage, uh, in both of these organizations uh, have been investing via different incubation centers uh, aggressively. So we mentioned about T-Hub, we mentioned about uh, C-Camp, right? Sci and XLO, there are multiple uh, great uh, incubation centers that are there in the ecosystem. And uh, you know, out of 150 investments that I would have led and done uh, in my career, I think more than 70 to 80 percent would be, uh, you know, from incubation centers or were incubators at some or the, the point of time. And is there any specific reason? I mean, is, is there a pedigree that comes with, uh, you know, being incubated at certain place that you would uh, value more? Uh, there is a validation that comes in place because what happens is most of the entrepreneurs are slightly confused about, they're great scientists, they would be great product guys, but in terms of business, not necessarily a, a, a great scientist or a great techie or a great products person would be a great business person as well. So what these incubation centers do is give them a complete uh, hand holding or support. Most of them do give uh, you know support in terms of how they need to chalk out their business model, how they need to start monetizing, how they need to go to the market and make a smaller mistakes rather than burning all the money of the investors. Fair enough. And, you know, taking your point ahead, right, uh, the pedigree of, you know, being incubated at a certain center comes from the selection criteria, obviously. So I would like to throw the question to three of you over there that uh, for investors to take your startup seriously, there would be, you know, certain uh, criteria that you would kind of have before you take them under your wing. So what is it that you do at T-Hub and uh, Sushanto, your thoughts also as on it? So uh, firstly, the two uh, ways one can engage with T-Hub, right? One is a non-programmatic way. Matlab, uh, we, want, we, we want to be open to everybody, right? We want to be able to add to everybody, uh, which means there are a lot of uh, departments that we created, which means a funding desk, for example. Anybody can approach a funding desk and ask to being facilitated for funding or a mentorship desk. Anybody can give a call and say that, you know, I want this kind of a mentor for fintech product, for example. So that is one way. So we don't have a selection criteria as such. The only criteria is there's a limited number of seats. We just got, you know, at full capacity, we'll be having just 3,000 seats, right? So we can't, and there's a waiting list of around 1,200 startups right now. So we can't facilitate anybody to physically be in the building, right? So we ask ourselves, apart from the what you pay for the seat, what more can you build, bring for us, right? So that is one thing, that is the only criteria when people want to engage with us. But programmatically, when you engage, that means we run a lot of programs. Uh, we run a idea validation program, product readiness program, funding readiness program, business readiness program, and program for scale. So, and every, we are planning to run three cohorts every year in all of these five aspects, right? For there, it becomes difficult because if you take a step back, right, who, who teaches startups, right? How, who knows what is the right formula to create a successful startup? Uh, so even the trainers also are sort of finding their foot right now. Right now is where after, you know, seven or eight years, people have spent in, an, in some other incubator or some other scene. There are people who have second time, third time founders who are now coming to ours. So most of our program team are ex-founders. Oh, okay. So they sort of understand what it takes to the journey of a startup. Right? So there we start putting selection criteria. Right? And the selection criteria is different for which kind of a program that you want to come in. So typically the acceptance rate, we have started monitoring that right now. Uh, but, and we started putting really very strong filters there. The acceptance rate is for us, for our programs are an average of four to 6%, okay. which means we fix a cohort size of an average of 20, and then we get around 500 applications for that. Right. So, uh, so there we try and, because there are only limited number of seats for the cohort as well, because if we take 300, 400 size of startups, then we're not able to add value to everybody. Got it, got it. And I think, uh, you know, that lower the uh, selection criteria, I think higher the quality of startups that will kind of be incubated. Exactly, exactly. So what we also do is we monitor the growth during the st of startup itself, startups uh, during the cohort itself, which means when he came in, what was five or six metrics? One is the first one is employment. You know, what is the, how much, how much more is he, people has he employed? How has his revenue growth been? How has the sales pipeline been? If it's a funding cohort, then after, at the finish of the cohort, how many investors is every startup having a second or a third follow-up round with? Right, right. So these are the something that we started measuring right now in the past four or five months. Right. So one of the success parameters for implementation of seed fund scheme is also that if the startup has been able to raise another round of funds. So 
I think angel networks are like the natural extension to the incubation graduation journey. So uh, any advice to incubation centers so that they can prepare their incubators to come to you guys at uh, the graduation stage? So I just go a step back is when we as angel investors invest in a company, what we do is we check with our friends in the VC world and find out whether this company, if it achieves A, B and C, they'll be willing to invest in them. And that becomes sort of our filter to select companies. And that is why Lead Angels has been reasonably successful in getting 50 to 60% of our companies funded for the next stage. And this is exactly what incubators should follow, that you should get around to connecting with angel networks such as ours and speak to them and say, this is the company that we are looking to choose what is your opinion? Will you fund this at a later stage? And that is exactly what we did at Sign. So we had angel investors on our investment committee when I was in Sign for them to help them to choose the startups or take their opinion before we selected a startup uh, and, and took those startups in which found interest among, because this is the ecosystem, right? What incubators produce, angels have to eat and what angels eat you know, the VCs will eat. So everyone has to kind of check in with the next person next in the uh, food chain. Person? Yeah, in the food chain, exactly. So, and that was fairly successful in when we did that at uh, Sign. We got few of VCs and angels to be on our investment committee. And that helped us to get our companies funded. And I'm using the same technique here in at Lead Angels to help our companies get funded. Right, right. And um, Amin, so your thoughts on you know how you have uh, invested in startups so maybe through equity via incubators or direct grants how has your experience been have uh, you know has though that side of investment been fruitful for you yes yeah, so f apart from all the points uh, my co-panelists have covered for us one parameter is very important the social impact that these startups are creating because the social impact that these startups are creating because we are like a non-profit arm and we have a separate mandate <coughs> Whereas when it comes to investing in startups, we have other two arms. One is the private equity arm of the bank, and then we have SBI Capital Ventures. SBI Cap Ventures, we call it. They have need Fund 1, need Fund 2, they have a real estate fund. So they take care of the VC business, but we don't check with them as such because we have to maintain arms and distance. But we know what they want because we are from the same group. We know what is the mandate of that fund because it's with the UK government and with the Indian government or the fund is. So like say they have incubated something in the coaching chain. They have incubated something and scaled it to great heights, uh, something called a dairy business in Odisha. So we know what they want and then what we want oh, so is there is a synergy. So suppose if I have funded C camp for a remote monitoring technology during COVID times. Like I can monitor the patients. If I am a nurse, I can monitor 100 patients on my iPad or my mobile. So that has a huge implication for the bank as such. The community perspective, but other perspective is the social impact, whether my you know short term mandate is being met. So when we launch challenges, one is for Maharashtra, we wanted to do it now. We are, we launched yesterday for the Pan India. So we see incubators, what is their success ratio, what kind of social impact startups they have created as well as sustained. Because you know, in two, three years, most of these startups, they die a natural death when they focus on dual objectives of, you know, raising for the right. funds, solving social impact both. So that's like a very difficult field which we are operating in. But most important we see is like, what is the track record of the incubators? What is their team strength? If somebody wants to get into aerospace, they should have those scientists. It's not just like a fancy pre presentation they should make. And then when we select uh, the startups, like uh, if we incubate 20, then we give seed fund to four to five because we have a small fund. We can't just give seed fund to everyone. So the ones who get the incubation support plus the seed fund from us, they should have a very solid core team as well as the expertise in that said area. Like we'll give you an example of some uh, one we gave seed fund this week. So they have a platform called Deal Save. So when I make a payment to you, uh, which is like uh, non-bank payment directly, like we do a UPI transfer, and you, if you are supposed to deliver some goods to me and you don't deliver it, then my payment is like less. So this is for the unorganized market, mostly for street vendors or somebody who runs a business from the house. So this platform creates an escrow facility. So when we both 
enter into an agreement automated one page agreement will be generated that you will supply me say a wallet and i have to pay you 2000 rupees so when i pay you 2000 rupees you get a notification money paid but it goes to the escrow account so when the wallet gets delivered through your delivery partner that money goes to you so that we see is a you know natural uh, problem solving through that startup for the bank because a lot of frauds are happening in the online payment so we just gave the seat fund to them and they have like a very solid right. team then another startup we gave is uh, called Vemi, uh, W-E-M-Y, led by a woman uh, founder and she's supporting other women entrepreneurs. So if someone has a small business of you know creating artistic yeah. mugs, creating cookies, anything led by women, so she, from, the, so from, her, social yeah, impact, from her impact. platform they can sell it. And the parties, there are so many websites, there are lakhs of websites who are selling products online. But this founder has cracked the code in terms of quality and supply chain. So if you see her mug, you all four would want to buy it. That's like a challenge to all four of you. So, so that kind of startup we like to give seed funding. Otherwise, there are hundreds of startups selling cups. So her cup is like we have given to our chairman during the Diwali gift. All the directors and not a single director has not sent a written compliment that this is a fantastic product. We have sent a box to them that uh, these are some of the products. So when we fund some startup, they should be like the best in that game or willing to be the best. And of course, incubators are there to help them. So that also matters. Like some startups who got incubated and then in the subsequent round, we have to ask them, you know, we can't support you because they were not doing the job full time or they were having other ventures as well or other mandates as well. So we want somebody who is like full time on it because for a social impact, that problem they have to Obviously. solve. Obviously. Thank you. So incubators have funds that they can invest in startups, right? And post that, can revenue-based financing be looked at as a valid option for you know not diluting uh, equity further and kind of going ahead sure so revenue based financing is a new concept that has uh, kick started in india uh, it started with uh, a company called clearco in the valley and canada and uh, there are multiple companies that are uh, coming up with different products uh, now if you see i would like to give you a background if you see 10 years down the line there were not many angel networks or angel investors in the ecosystem, right? There were hardly a bunch of investors uh, who were willing to cut checks and diversify their portfolio. But today, there are great players, right? There, there is Lead Angels, there is uh, you know, Mumbai Angels and multiple other uh, angel networks that are there in the ecosystem. Similarly, we see a lot of uh, you know, innovative structuring coming into the play and a lot of companies also, or a lot of startups also taking revenue-based financing uh, in addition to the check. So what we have also started is, I, I think the question of whether the incubity companies, once they raise angel investors, can they uh, benefit from revenue-based financing? Yes, of course. Uh, out of 400 companies, 400 plus companies that get Vantage as funded in two years, I think uh, around 40% would be companies that have incubated from uh, uh, you know a decent incubation center and raise angel funds or friends and family uh, there would also be uh, you know a great market for revenue based financing for startups that have grown and are also raising bridge or vc fundraise or pe fundraise so what happens in the ecosystem is because of the funding winter or uh, you know the economic uh, slowdown or economic reality check what is happening currently a lot of investors as opposed to 2021 who used to invest at crazy valuations are being more cognizant in terms of cutting checks or the dry powder is there but they are being more practical in terms of the valuations so revenue based financing venture debt uh, you know uh, stock options appreciation is a new concept that is in the market as well these are great ways to take the bridge capital and negotiate proper valuation rather than giving, diluting more of your company in pressure of the runway. Okay, okay. So, again, all, uh, you know, great insights from uh, all four of you. I'm sure the audience and, you know, incubation centers, corporates and startups have learned a lot from uh, this panel discussion. A big round of applause for uh, all the panelists over here.